Round four. Round four. All right, round four. Again, I'll remind you it is an under thousand category of the Hart House Open. Uh, the Hart House Reading Week Open, my fault. And this game, I'm playing against a rated 861 player, and I am 830 provisional. I believe I finally got the white pieces in this game. Like to actually play a game. And it started as such. I've been looking at E4. I don't generally play E4, but uh, I'm, I'm getting more into it. So I started with E4. Generally, I'm looking to, to, to go maybe into a Petrov or something like that. Just the, something kind of easy in the opening. But uh, he defuncts that immediately with this Knight C6, which is definitely a move. I respond with B3, which is kind of nothing. I have friends that are higher rated and they were laughing at me for playing this move and Fion Kettering the, Fion Kettering the Bishop because you're kind of just, I guess, wasting time and it's not really anything. The pawn's already, you know, going to be protected by D6. So it's, it's just not really a good move. So Bishop comes out to C5, already kind of like, eyeing the, the f2 pawn, which is not something you want eyed. But, you know, in true fashion, I play c4, which again got laughed at, but uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I mean, maybe not play, maybe not play c4. So these, uh, these games where I bring out the bishop, I'm not really comfortable with bringing the bishop out on the diagonal. I generally feel in Kato stuff. So this is all very much experimentation for me. I don't know enough of these lines and this is a, definitely a learning experience for me. So knight to f6, going after the pawn. I can defend it in a couple ways. So I believe I choose the knight way, which I don't think is a good idea but I can't really tell why. Um, I'm sure there's some kind of tactics in there. Eventually the pawn could be pushed. Yeah, like that's, I mean, no, I think that's fine. I think it's fine because you do defend against that. Okay. Again, this is this is opening theory that I'm not very aware of, so I'm not gonna really talk about it because I, I don't have anything to talk about. Stuff I need to learn, but I'm going through what I'm thinking in games. So he plays D6, which I thought was not good personally, but he does want to get his bishop out and get that pin going because that's that's how players like this play. I just don't like those plays. So I castle, he takes the pin because that's obviously what they play. Uh, I move the bishop back because in a previous game, uh, I believe I pushed h3 and got embarrassed. Or it might even be this game. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. No, it was it was a previous game. It wasn't in this tournament. I pushed a three, and everything opened up. Just everything. Sorry, that's that's eliminate that line. I don't want that to line. Let's go back. That never happened. Okay, so he doubles up his queen and bishop. Like he he puts them on the same file. This is kind of an issue. I want to quickly get rid of his bishop. So that's kind of my plan is to get it. But the second the knight moves, you're exposing the square. And I definitely didn't think of that. So I feel kind of the bishop, which is super slow. Then he puts the knight in. Uh, which kind of ends up in like some kind of like forks that aren't really forks. But it's it's this is what I saw. 
So, um, knight takes, pawn takes, and then knight d5. I believe I was looking at some kind of tricky d5 lines where the knights, the knights cover. Um, yeah, no, this is the game I'm thinking of. So basically, this knight should kind of just stay here. If if you're going to do something with this knight, it should be after the king castles kingside. But because the king can still castle queenside, this move that isn't really tremendously helpful. Another reason why is because if he captures the pawn here, it it doesn't matter. It's like it's just a free pawn. So I'd have to defend the pawn. I didn't play like that in the game though. So he brings the bishop back. Which, if I was smart, I would find another way to deal with this. Probably a better move than I played is knight to f4. And then that kind of takes away a key square for the bishop and attacks the bishop at the same time. Uh, the bishop is essentially trapped. Yes, the bishop is trapped. So this move would have trapped the bishop. And enforce the trade because every every square is taken. So that would have been the move to play. I was very impetuous and I played a very stupid move. I didn't see why it was stupid. But the second the pawn takes here and the king is not castled. This is a huge file to use for the opponent. So this is, this is an instructive way to kind of like figure out how not to play this position. Because the knight move wasn't terrible after his bishop move. The bishop move did allow me knight to f4, which would have helped me a lot because the knight can't go here because the bishop takes. Knight can't go here because the pawn... T I guess the knight could kind of go here. That's if it wants to open me up because it's the same idea, but it would be a different, a different um, set of circumstances because the pawn would still be here and I could just kind of attack the, the queen and, and take care of everything. So I think that would still be fine. So the bishop would probably want to trade or would, would probably want to take the, probably want to do something else. Uh, words are escaping me. Anywho. So yeah, the that, that takes, I didn't see how horrifying that is. And this move was terrible. So the second I played h3 here, I immediately regretted it because the bishop can take h3 all day long the the second i thought about it i thought about this move i really thought it was fine i thought it was fine and the whole idea behind it is that i can just set something up like this sure i have an open file but his king's kind of exposed it's going to be a lot on the queen side it's it just it seemed like it was a good idea to trade off the bishop and queen and double my pawns here for uh, play on the queen side. But he just took. And again, like I'm not taking back. In no universe am I taking back. Because the, the rook is just too annoying. It's maybe there's a way you can hold this. I don't want to play it this way. So I Put the bishop on f2 to defend the pawn. Brings the, the knight, the rook over. It's still kind of like, it's scary. It's definitely scary, but it can be held. The problem is I didn't see the moves that were coming. So I moved the, the, the rook out of the way because I didn't want to have some kind of like pin that would force a bunch of trades that I don't, that I don't like that would end in... Uh, the queen may be getting into my camp uh, here. It just might be not comfortable. Like some, it just it just didn't make it just wasn't a happy a happy scene for me. I can't really articulate it now, but I wasn't happy with uh, with my rook being on f one. He takes this time to castle, and even still, I'm like I'm not I'm not dead. I'm not absolutely dead. I just have to find a way to deal with this. Maybe a good way to deal with this is to 
uh, get the bishop here, push the pawn, and then bring the bishop back. At least there's something here, um, maybe, or like push this pawn. The problem is I, I allow this pawn to get into my territory with my next move, which is c3, and I don't know why I played it. Uh, I, th I thought, like, again, I got into, like, everyone trades mode, which is not the case. It just isn't the case. People don't play like that. So, again, he gets his pawn to a really good spot, which takes away a key escape square if my king ever gets to f1. So, yeah, there may have been possibilities, but at this point, I'm just kind of, I'm kind of dead. I attack the, the bishop because I feel like I have nothing else to do. He can tuck his bishop away. It's, you know, it's, you know, it's easy. The, pro the biggest problem with this is that after rook g7, I was very, very discouraged with how my position was. And I was just trying to find a way to create some kind of counterplay where I could maybe have an attack on the king. So I just started pushing pawns here. The problem is that he's just going to double up and then I'm in a terrible, terrible state. So I play c4 just to like start pushes, maybe maybe get this advanced, trade something, get something going, get the bishop off that file, the rook over, queen over, like it's just, there's something, maybe, maybe there's something. That's, that's kind of like just distract him from his plan. The problem is he doesn't need to worry about it. He just goes after the pawn. I push the next pawn. He doubles up. I play a really, really terrible move. So this move I thought about for a very, very long time. And the problem with this is always pay attention to your king being pinned and your pawns being pinned to your king. And this pin, this pawn is 100% pinned. So playing g3 in this position is worse than playing something like g4. And g4 is still bad. It's like it's it's not a good thing. Like you're just shedding material. So you could do a lot of things. You can trade the bishop and then bishop goes and then rook check and it's just a queen block maybe or like run your king around. It's just it's not good. It's just not good. So once he's doubled, it's it's just not great. So I played G G three like I said. He just took because why wouldn't you? It's just free. And in the game, because I didn't notice the pin, I had a 12-year-old child tell me that I made an illegal move and that's not fun to have happen to you. So just try not to let that happen to you. And uh, so I took, I took, which is an illegal move. And then the arbiters came over and I was like, don't, don't worry, he doesn't need time. He's, this game is over anyway. So he, uh, I played king h1, which in in hindsight, king, uh, no, yeah, king h2 might have been a little bit better because the bishop still covers that square. Maybe a little bit resilient, but you're still getting mated. So king e1 plays a bishop move. Uh, there's nothing I can, I can, really, like I, I can take with a bishop, I suppose, but then it's just like, you know, it's, it's over. It's just over. So I move to h2 now queen check and it's just disgusting and then takes and over that was game four